గుడ్ మార్నింగ్ శుభోదయం స్వాగతం ఈరోజు మరి డే థర్టీన్ క్లబ్ టూ స్పోకెన్ ఇంగ్లీష్ సిరీస్లో మీ అందరికీ స్వాగతం తెలియజేస్తున్నది ఇస్మాయిల్ మరి ఈ లైవ్ ఇంటరాక్టివ్ వెబినార్ సిరీస్ ఏదైతే యూట్యూబ్లోనో అలాగే ఫేస్బుక్లోనో స్ట్రీమ్ అవుతుందో మరి ఈరోజు చూసినట్టయితే ఒక మంచి టాపిక్తో మీ ముందుకు వచ్చడం రావడం జరిగింది మరి టాపిక్ ఏంటంటే ఎక్స్ప్రెసింగ్ ఒపీనియన్స్ మన ఒపీనియన్స్ని ఎలా ఎక్స్ప్రెస్ చేయాలి అని మనకు తెలియజేయడానికి మనతో పాటు ఉన్నారు రిసోర్స్ పర్సన్స్ సో ఐ హార్టీ వెల్కమ్ మిస్టర్ సుమన్ బండి గారు ఫ్రమ్ బెంగళూర్ ఫర్ టుడే సెషన్ గుడ్ మార్నింగ్ సార్ అండ్ విజయ్ భాస్కర్ గారు ఫ్రమ్ గోనేగండ్ల కర్నూల్ డిస్టిక్ హీఈస్ ఏ హెచ్ఎం ఆఫ్ ఏ ప్రైమరీ స్కూల్ గుడ్ మార్నింగ్ సార్ అండ్ వెల్కమ్ మిస్టర్ మధు ఏ మధుబాబు గారు ఎస్ఏ ఇంగ్లీష్ జెడ్పిహెచ్ఎస్ కాశీ బుగ్గా శ్రీకాకుళం వెల్కమ్ మధు గారు మరి మనతో ఉన్నారు డిజిటల్ ఎడ్యుకేషన్ వింగ్ హెచ్ఓడి మిస్టర్ పోకురి శ్రీనివాస్ గారు వెల్కమ్ యూ సార్ అండ్ ఐ రిక్వెస్ట్ యూ టు ఇంట్రడ్యూస్ సుమన్ బండి గారు టు ది వ్యూవర్స్ welcome uh, all the participants of, to this session uh, suman bandigaru is a teacher trainer and uh, a teacher uh, trainer to the teachers uh, from the regional institute of english bangalore and uh, he has a uh, capacity to uh, increase the capacity of the teachers on english and he also helped this in uh, building of uh, many modules in, in english so we heartily welcome you and your team madhu babu and vijay bhaskar garu uh, to uh, place this uh, occasion thank you good morning sir thank thank you for welcoming me and uh, the resource persons uh, of today's session so good morning dear teachers uh, welcome all of you to yet another day yet another new session on the spoken english uh, series uh, webinar 13 so please give me a while while i share my screen so t- webinar 13 is going to be about expressing likes dislikes and uh, opinions so just as all of you know we are uh, discussing about various language functions yesterday we have covered uh, two important uh, language functions expressing abilities and also how to make request in uh, english so today we are going to look at uh, uh yet uh, two other important language functions that is expressing likes and dislikes and also opinions so these two language functions are also uh among the basic uh, and frequently used language functions so for today's session i have uh, along with me uh state resource persons from andhra pradesh mr vijay baskar garu and uh, mr madhubabu garu so i welcome both of them they will be joining us uh, in the second half of the session so what are uh, we going to look at today look at uh, uh, various phrases and expressions to perform these language functions that is expressing likes dislikes and opinions we are going to understand the meaning variation in usage of these expressions uh, and words uh, contextually and uh, towards the second half we are also going to talk about how to present uh, these language functions in the classrooms for our primary children as i said uh, uh, not only learning about these language functions is important for us as teachers but we also should equip ourselves with the knowledge of how to present these uh, in the classroom so first let us start uh, we are talking about expressing likes and dislikes we all are different in so many ways isn't it we all have our own differences so one important aspect that leads to such differences is our likes and dislikes so in the way dislikes we all are different isn't it what do we like right for example what do we like to eat what do we like to do in our free times right what do we not like so when we talk about these things we all are uh, different what someone likes uh, someone else may dislike and what somebody else may dislike someone else may like so to know somebody is also 
getting to know about their likes and dislikes. So when you know about somebody's likes and dislikes, uh, you are actually getting to know them better. And we use this function so often. This function is uh, such an important and frequent part of our daily life that uh, uh, nobody has to teach you actually. We all, uh, all of us who have basic proficiency in English can already uh, express our express our likes and dislikes uh, to a certain extent. But in today's session, we are going to look at the common phrases and expressions that we use to express likes and dislikes, and also some other alternate forms and uh, common mistakes, uh, if any, during uh, expressing uh, likes and dislikes. Next. So first, uh, we look at uh, how to make uh, different types of sentences, like different types of sentences while expressing likes and uh, dislikes. So like, as all of you know, is the most important and most common verb when it comes to expressing likes and dislikes. Most of us uh, in the spoken context, we use this verb uh, like. So how do we make uh, positive sentences? So when we express likes and dislikes, uh, we primarily use uh, the present tense, the simple present tense. As you can see, some example sentences are, I like uh, English. As a teacher of English, of course, I have to like uh, English. I like English. We like English, right? And uh, you like movies. They like movies. So this is how positive statements uh, look like when you're talking about uh, expressing likes. Now, if you notice carefully, the third and fourth sentences, the verb takes a yes form, likes. So why does this happen? Because the subjects are singular. He likes popcorn. She likes popcorn. And Rama, even proper names here, even when we talk about proper names, uh, Rama is singular here. So all singular subjects take uh, likes. But if you look at the first sentence, I like English. I is also singular. But why does I take, uh, uh, doesn't take uh, the yes form? So I is an exception. I always takes the plural form. Now, this is not about likes and dislikes. Uh, all verbs uh, uh, in English, when we use the present tense, uh, uh, singular verbs take the S form, he, she, it, uh, and all proper names like Rama, Rama likes dancing, Mohan likes uh, movies, etc. All proper names, uh, when they are singular, they take the S form, and plural nouns take the uh, without S form. So I is uh, an exception. So this is how we make uh, uh, positive sentences. We express likes and dislikes, mainly using the present tense. Next, when we express uh, likes and dislikes, uh, especially likes, uh, let us look at uh, the variation in terms of uh, forms. So after the verb like, uh, what are the different phrases, types of phrases that we can use? So look at the first set of sentences. I like chocolates. I like movies. I like freedom fighters. Now, if you see, all the words that come after the verb like, right? If you see, they are all various objects, various things or uh, people. So when you express likes, uh, you can like, uh, you can say that you like uh, various people, things uh, or uh, even places. So I like chocolates, I like movies, I like cookies, I like uh, uh, film actors, I like... Uh, nature rich places i like bombay i like bangalore so you can have places people or uh, objects and people after the verb uh, like the second sentence if you see i like swimming i like driving i like fishing so how are these objects different from the first ones so these are not things but these are concepts these are processes these are action right these are the names of a few actions so swimming Right? So swimming is a process. So you are using the ing form. The noun form. These are also gerunds. When you use a verb as a, a noun, you refer to them as gerunds. So similarly, you can use any ing form. The process of doing anything. I like acting. Right? I like driving. I like uh, talking. I like listening. So similarly, you can use uh, uh, any ing form uh, of uh, a verb. And the third one, if you see, this is slightly different. These are also actions. 
but if you see they are used uh, along with uh, the preposition to so to swim to drive to act these are all base forms of uh, verbs as you can see to like to act so the meaning is same when you say i like swimming and i like to swim the meaning is same only the forms are different in the second case we are using an ing form in the third case we are just uh, you, it's, uh, using it with a to infinitive in grammar we call it as a to plus a infinitive so this is how when we express likes uh, we can talk about uh, objects uh, people things uh, or actions uh, uh, actions both in ing form as well as to infinitive forms now by adding an adjective or by adding a phrase we can make our uh, statements of like uh, more specific for example the first statement i like chocolates i can make it more specific by adding an adjective i like dark chocolates i like milk chocolates i like cold chocolates i like soft chocolates similarly the second sentence i like swimming you can make it more specific uh, by adding i like swimming in a river i don't enjoy swimming uh, in a well similarly the third expression i like to swim i like to swim where i like to swim in a pool or the timing you can add a phrase which reflects the uh, timing i like to swim in the mornings i like to swim in the evenings so this is how we can make uh, by adding phrases and adjectives we can make our statements of like uh, more specific so that the opposite person knows better about our likes and dislikes so so far we have looked at uh, how do we uh, express uh, likes right next let us look at uh, how we can express uh, our uh, dislikes when we do not like uh, something so look at the first statement i like coffee this is a positive statement so how do we make it uh, into a negative statement right how do i make it into a dislike when you express this use the word not the negative word not and you use it with an auxiliary verb so here we have uh, two auxiliaries do and uh, does so i as i said uh, takes always the plural verbs that is why i like coffee i do not like coffee i do not like this is the negative form of the sentence i like coffee similarly you can also use the direct verb dislike the opposite of like is dislike so instead of saying i do not like coffee you can also say i dislike coffee and don't is the contracted form of do plus not as you all know as we have already discussed uh, contracted forms are used especially in the spoken form most of the time in the spoken form we do not use full forms sir. so don't for spoken english and maybe when you are talking in a formal context when you are writing you are supposed to use a do not or the full form so i don't like we don't don't and they don't these are all the subjects that take the plural auxiliary don't or do not look at the next sentence she likes tea as i already said uh, in the positive sentences she likes he likes she goes he goes right these uh, subjects take the singular form similarly when it comes to like uh, also she likes tea the negative form you add the auxiliary does plus not so she doesn't like tea he doesn't like tea mohan doesn't like tea right if it is a full form or a formal context you say does not and if it is a spoken context uh, you are supposed to say she doesn't like tea so this is how we express uh, uh, dislikes basically using the verb uh, like next so while talking uh, it is also important uh, to ask questions about likes and dislikes so not only uh, we should be able to talk about our likes and dislikes but also we should be able to ask questions about others likes and dislikes so how do questions related to likes and dislike uh, look like so let us first look at uh, the yes or no questions as you know questions are of two types yes or no questions and wh questions so how can we ask somebody a yes or no question uh, about likes and uh, dislikes in fact 
even before expressing likes and dislikes uh, the questioning becomes a very very important aspect because in real life most often we don't express our likes and dislikes on our own somebody has to ask us a question about our like and dislike maybe somebody wants to offer something maybe somebody wants to start doing something with you that is when somebody can ask you a question so do you like chess or somebody you go you visit somebody's home they want to offer you something so they'll ask you do you like coffee do you like tea and that is when you say yes i like coffee or i like tea so that is why questioning uh, the process of making question becomes an important aspect of uh, using these uh, functions or performing these functions so if you look at uh, how do questions look like the yes or no question the auxiliary questions because as i already said likes and dislikes are expressed in the present tense naturally when you frame questions yes or no questions uh, the auxiliary verbs are do and does depending on the subject so if it is a plural subject we use do if it is a singular subject we use does so do you like chess if the subject is he or she does he like chess does she like chess or if you are talking about a particular person does ram like chess so similarly just like statements uh, the various forms that come after the verb like in the first question do you like chess this is just the name of a game or you can also say do you like to play chess you are using a verb form after like two plus uh, infinitive form do you like to play chess do you like to eat fruits do you like to talk to me do you like to spend time with me similarly you can also use an ing form while making questions just like uh, statements do you like playing chess do you like eating outside do you like uh, going on a long drive so this is how you can use uh, similar to statements you can use objects uh, places people or two plus verb forms basic verb forms or even ing forms uh, while making questions and the last question if you can see in the first set of questions don't you like chess this is a negative question just like yesterday we discussed uh, just like uh, we have positive questions uh, we are going to also have negative questions right as we discussed a negative question is used for confirmation so don't you like chess so when do you ask this question when you already have some information but you are not sure you thought the other person likes chess but now it seems to be uh, it doesn't seem to be so so that is where and when you can ask don't you like chess and look at uh, the next set of questions these are wh questions as you can see some examples how do these look like what do you like what do you like to eat what do you like to play or what do you like doing the ing form which one do you like when you are asking about uh, a choice between uh, two things or uh, two objects which one do you like uh, between these why do you like her so much to the extent to the extent to which you like something or somebody so while making questions uh, if you notice uh, some structural aspects to be kept in mind look at the first set of uh, examples you like fruits this is a statement so to convert this into an yes or no question all you have to do is uh, put the auxiliary in the beginning put the helping verb in the beginning depending on the subject if it is you like fruits do you like fruits if it is she like fruits you will say does she like fruits similarly if you want to frame a wh question uh, which are targeted question these are not like yes or no questions where the answer is limited to yes or no so all you have to do is put the wh word in the beginning followed by the auxiliary so do you like fruits yes or no question or auxiliary question and wh question what do you like right why do you like this right this is how you can replace uh, uh, the other wh words and form questions about uh, uh, wh questions about likes and uh, dislikes if it is uh, the subject is she she likes soft drinks because she takes the yes form again the auxiliary should be does so does she like soft drinks does he like 
cookies does mohan like english movies so this is how you can frame you know other examples so what does she like what does she like what doesn't she like a negative question so we can make questions uh, using the verb uh, like various types of questions so far we have focused on uh, sentence making how can we make uh, different types of sentences uh, that is uh, positive statements expressing likes uh, negative statements uh, expressing uh, likes uh, and uh, various questions uh, about likes and dislikes now let us look at what are the other forms what are the other phrases expressions that we use to express uh, likes so apart from the verb like uh, you can use uh, these range of uh, phrases and expressions in order to use depending upon uh, uh, you know how you want to express and uh, uh, the context some expressions are used uh, in the formal informal context and some of them are used in the formal context uh, for example i enjoy enjoy is a very common verb which you can replace uh, by the verb uh, like so the structural aspects also remain the same just like you say i like i can also say i enjoy movies just like you can say i like watching movies by adding a verb i enjoy watching movies and uh, i am into look at this phrase i am into this is uh, an informal expression we are not supposed to use this uh, uh, informal expression so you can say i am into into is always followed by the ing form of the action i am into acting i am into acting means nowadays or recently i have started uh, acting in films or short films whatever i am into acting he is into business you can also use the noun forms so the recent changes that have happened in your uh, life uh, something that you have taken up uh, you can say uh, using i am into and another important verb here is love so instead of like you can always uh, say love but love is normally considered as a stronger form of like when you really think uh, very intensely so you say i love watching films or you can make it stronger by adding these words like i really love watching uh, movies i just love watching movies so just is mainly used in uh, informal spoken context i am fond of so this expression is a kind of formal expression i am fond of you can use it informally as well as uh, formally so fond is a form of stronger like i am fond of music i am fond of music i am fond of movies i am fond of uh, food i am fond of italian food and i am interested in the next expression is also a formal you know, usually a formal expression i am a fan of you can also say i am a big fan of to make your uh, statement even more stronger i am a fan of movies i am passionate about so passion also refer to refers to a stronger form of like i am passionate about what i really like is my favorite thing to do is so these last two expressions are really uh, very very more formal so when it comes to expressing dislike also we have a range of expressions as we have already seen the like opposite of like is dislike so you can just say i dislike i do not like i dislike i hate so hate is a stronger form of uh, uh, dislike when you really hate something you hate something you really do not like it at any cost so i hate watching movies i hate traveling alone right i hate staying alone i am sick of i am tired of so these are again normally used in uh, uh, formal as well as informal expressions i am tired of is a little more formal i am sick of somebody right you are tired of somebody somebody is annoying you they are irritating you a lot right so you do not like that to so much of extent you say i am sick of you i am sick of this thing i am sick of the work when your workload increases a lot you are tired doing your work you can say i am tired of uh, doing this work i am sick of uh, doing this uh, job 
Next, I can't stand and I can't bear. Again, both these expressions are also formal expressions. Normally, we don't use them in informal situations. Sir. So I can't stand his rude behavior, right? I can't stand uh, uh, doing this job anymore. I can't bear his nonsense. I can't bear this nuisance. And similarly, last two expressions are also usually used in the formal context. Uh, it's not my thing, you know. Uh, it's not my thing. But it is not as specific as it's not my cup of tea. This is such a common expression. I'm sure many of you have heard this expression, right? It's not my cup of uh, tea, right? Means when you do not like something, you can formally say, it's not my cup of tea. Next, uh, sometimes uh, you like more than one thing, right? You like more than one thing. Let us take a context here. Uh, you like tea and you also like coffee. You have the habit of taking both. So, though you like both, you might have to say, which one do you prefer? Right? So, you can say, I prefer tea to coffee. This is an expression where uh, uh, prefer you use uh, when you are talking about uh, two things or more than one thing. It's on a set of things uh, which uh, you like, but then you have to uh, prioritize your choice. So that's where you say prefer. And when you use prefer, uh, this expression goes with uh, two. So you are supposed to say, I prefer tea to coffee. So though I like both tea and coffee, I normally prefer. So when it is a general preference, uh, which applies to all time frames, you can say, I prefer tea to coffee. I prefer fresh fruits uh, to fruit juice, etc. But somebody asks, somebody is asking you now, they want to offer you something. So right now, what would you prefer? You like tea and you like coffee, but right now, what do you want to have? So that is where you can say, I'd like to have coffee right now. Whereas prefer is a general preference. Uh, whereas right now, in this context, when somebody wants to offer you something, you can say, I would like to have coffee. Though in informal context, uh, you reduce this expression, use the contract form i i'd 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 like i'd like to have coffee i'd like to have fruits i'd like to have lunch this is how you use this expression so this is all about uh, uh, expressing likes and uh, dislike next we'll go to part two that is expressing opinions this is also an important and a basic function right so on a day-to-day -day basis, uh, all of us express opinions. Uh, but it is important to understand the term opinion before expressing opinion. So what is an opinion? It is just your feeling about somebody or something. What do you feel about something or somebody? Opinion is nothing but mi uh, abhiprayam. Right? Oka vyakti gurinchi, oka... Oka vastu gurinchi, leda oka concept gurinchi, mi abhiprayam emiti. Right? So that is what uh, opinion refers to. So it is a personal point of view, what you think about something and somebody. Miru oka vyakti gurinchi, oka vastu gurinchi, leda oka concept gurinchi, yeman kutu naru. Right? Mi individual uh, abhiprayam. Right? So it is based on your experiences and preferences. So opinions change from person to person. And okay, okay, people can have various uh, different opinions. So why, why do these changes happen? That is because your experiences are different. So opinions are based on your experiences as well as your preferences. Now, opinion fact. This is very important distinction that we need to make. Opinion is different from fact. Normally, people are confused between opinions and facts. So, opinion is your point of view. You are thinking about something or somebody. Whereas, fact is a, a statement of truth. And a fact in Miru verify chase coach. For example, Delhi is the capital city of India. That is not opinion. Everybody knows that it is true. So, there is no debate on the fact. Right? Delhi is the capital city of India. India is a large country. Right? Vijayawada is located in Andhra Pradesh. This is a fact. 
But when you say Vijayawada is a beautiful city, and chapte, that becomes opinion. In the Kante, Vaisag Valu, no, no, Vaisag is a beautiful city and chapter, right? More beautiful than. So that is an opinion. That is why there is no right or wrong about uh, when it comes to opinions. But when it comes to facts, uh, facts can be said, the state, right? This is wrong. But when it comes to opinion, there is no opinion which can be stated or proved to be right or wrong, right? So opinions are personal choices, personal belief statements. That's it. There is no right or wrong. Most of the quarrels between people happen due to variation in opinion. So everybody wants to stick to their opinion. I am right. I am right. And the opposite person keeps arguing, no, 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 I am right. But we have to understand that uh, Opinions are never wrong or wrong. You can have a majority opinion, you can have a minority opinion, but then still opinion is a opinion. So what are the common phrases that we use uh, when we express opinions? So these are some of the common expressions. I think uh, you should work hard. I think you should work hard. I believe this is true. Nobody knows what is true, but I believe this is true. But my, this is not true. So it's all about your personal thinking. I feel you should change your job. In my opinion, in my opinion, you should leave now. You should not stay here anymore. In my opinion means I think, right? I would say the so last two expressions are slightly more uh, form opinion. And I would uh, say. So we can also make our opinion stronger. Sometimes have to be assertive while expressing our opinion. So how do we make that? By adding adjectives and uh, adverbs. Notice the same expressions along with an adjective or an adverb. Instead of saying, I think, if you say, I really think, you're making it stronger. I honestly think, I strongly believe that we need to make some changes. I actually feel, so instead of saying, just saying, I feel, I actually feel, you're making it stronger, right? So instead of saying, I feel, I truly feel you should not do it. In my strict opinion, so this is an adjective. Most of the other words are adverbs. In my strict opinion, so this is how, by adding an appropriate adjective, or at work, we can make our opinions uh, count stronger. We can make them stronger. So when you use these words, the opposite person will start taking your opinions, start considering your opinions more seriously. They add weight to your opinion. Now, when it comes to opinions, we can, the moment we say opinion, of course, it usually means your personal opinion, but sometimes, uh, you may have to express general opinions also. So what are these? Look at the first three statements, expressions. In my opinion, if you ask me, I really feel that. So all these expressions uh, refer to somebody's individual thoughts. What do you as an individual feel about something, think about something or somebody, that's it. So these kind of expressions refer to your individual point of view, that is personal opinion. Opinions. But sometimes when we express our opinions, to make them count, to make them more stronger, we may have to say that it is not only me, it is not only I who thinks that this is true, but there are many people who believe that this is true. So that is where you change the expression by saying some people say that, right? So some people, there are a lot of people who believe that this is true. True. Everybody knows. So though it is an opinion, it is like a fact. I am considering that this is true. It is not just me or I who thinks that this is true. Everybody knows that. For example, let us say you are in an office setup. You are working in an office. There are hundreds of employees. So there is uh, one Mr. X who is very inefficient in his work. But he has a lot of other positive traits also. He is inefficient when it comes to work. He has showed or displayed his inefficiency many times uh, by the way of his uh, behavior. 
so most people in the office think that he is inefficient but there are at the same time many positive aspects uh, uh, of him why the management wants to retain him right they don't want to you know dismiss him from the job so in such case when you are making a statement about that person you can say everybody knows that he is uh, inefficient but there are some people who still look at those uh, positive traits or positive qualities so that is where you may want to say i think that he is inefficient it is not just sufficient because there are many other people also who think like you so to make it stronger and more valid you might say everybody thinks that he is inefficient or many of us think that many people most people think that he is inefficient so this is how we can differentiate between personal opinions as well as general opinions so let us look at some of the formal phrases so if you are uh, uh, giving your opinion in a very formal context uh, formal gathering expressions uh, that you can use that can sound better in my view it seems to me that it seems we have to make a lot of changes here is an example from my point of view from my point of view i don't think we should do this this is how you can express from my perspective from my perspective we should not adopt this policy this is what uh, i feel so this is how uh, these expressions can be used in more formal occasions or context so not only expressing your opinions also be able to ask for others opinions because when it comes to opinions as i said there is no right or wrong so when you are discussing or sharing opinion you can take a better decision right you should always be able to ask for others opinions along with expressing your opinions so it's important to know how to ask others of their opinions right so informally we can use any expression for example what about you vijay what do you think you know you it's your turn you can use any expression but then formally there are some expression cough what do you think about this mr vijay what are your thoughts about this how do you feel about this do you think this works do you think this will work what is your opinion about this what is your opinion on this miss geeta is that what you think so these are yes or no questions some auxiliary questions as you can see which you can use when you ask for opinions do you agree with me do you agree with this do you agree with uh, the have you got an opinion to share so as you can see most of these questions uh, are again used in the present tense because even the statements like i think in my opinion i feel i feel i believe even while expressing uh, we used uh, verbs in the present tense similarly if you can see most of these uh, questions are also used in the present tense what do you think what are how do you feel do and feel right what is your opinion is is that what you think is so all these most of these are in the present tense have you got your opinion this is also present perfect so all of them are used in the present tense and this is how we can ask about others opinions and when you ask for others opinions and others express their opinions it is also important for you it becomes a, a requirement for you to agree you either have to agree to somebody's opinion or you have to disagree so if you agree how do you agree what are some of the expressions uh, uh, which you can use in order to agree to somebody's opinion so informally you can say of course i agree that's true definitely that's a good point i think you are right i couldn't agree more so if you can see the first two or three expressions are mainly used in the informal situations or semi formal situations whereas the last three are used mainly in the formal context that's how you can agree to somebody that's a good point that's a very good point you can want to make it 
stronger. I think you are right. I think you have a point there. That's a very important point. I couldn't agree more. Formal expressions. Similarly, it's also important uh, to know how to disagree to somebody's opinion. You can say, I disagree. I don't agree. Yeah, but I disagree. Yeah, but I don't think uh, I'll agree. So mainly these expressions uh, are used informally. And also please note that uh, sometimes uh, direct disagreement, depending on the context and person with whom we are talking, can be rude. For example, directly, if you say in certain situations, certain people may get offended. If you directly say, I disagree, you are wrong. So it depends on the context. If you have a lot of freedom with that person, you can say, I disagree, you are wrong, I don't agree with you, etc. But uh, in a more formal situations, uh, being more polite, uh, uh, you can use choose to use the expressions, I'm afraid I disagree. I'm afraid I will have to disagree with you. I'm sorry, but I don't agree. You can be direct if it is required, but you can apologize. This is how you can be more polite while disagreeing to somebody's opinion. Now, the last two expressions are also formal in nature, but as you can see, they are more tactful. That's partly true, which means you are not completely disregarding the opposite person's statement or opinion. That, that's partly true, but, and then you can say, uh, express your disagreement. I see your point. So you are acknowledging before disagreeing with the opposite person, you are acknowledging what the person has said. You are giving some value to what he or she has said. So I see your point, but we'll have to do this, not what you said, etc. So this is how we can disagree. So opinions are not always uh, statements uh, beginning with, I think, I believe you should, uh, or uh, in my perspective, so far we have seen only such expressions. So opinions are not always uh, uh, statements uh, beginning with these phrases. Opinions in simple terms can also be expressed using descriptive words. On a daily basis, when we talk about things, people, when we describe people, things, objects or places, uh, we use various adjectives, isn't it? For example, look at these example sentences here. The movie was fantastic. So you feel, you just watch the movie and you feel the movie is fantastic. Not everybody feels uh, it is fantastic. Somebody may dislike the movie. The event, sorry, that's a typing mistake. The event was wonderful. You attended an event, but uh, somebody else might feel it is not so great. So though these are describing words, so as long as multiple possibilities are there, these are also opinions. She is a great human being. You feel somebody is a great human being, but somebody else might not feel. You might have seen some positive traits. So even when we use descriptive adjectives like this also, uh, you can still consider these to be as uh, opinions. What do you think about something? The movie was super good, extraordinary. A book, good read, great read. A book was engaging, a book was boring. People are charming, beautiful, attractive. You feel somebody is beautiful, but the same person, uh, uh, somebody else may not feel uh, that he or she is beautiful or attractive. So what attracts to you may, you know, the equation may change from person to person. If somebody helps you, you feel that that person is helpful, but somebody else has not received any help from that person. So he may not say, she may not say, this is a very helpful person, right? So these are also some kinds of uh, opinions when it comes to uh, describing, you know, using descriptive words like uh, adjectives. So this is all about uh, expressing uh, uh, opinions. And uh, so today we have covered the two important language functions, expressing likes and dislikes, expressing opinions. As I said, uh, this is only for your awareness and information. If you think uh, that you are not good at performing these functions, uh, you need to practice a lot using some good books or online exercises uh, or getting exposed yourselves to you know, various uh, uh, texts uh, or conversations, narrations in English. So with this, uh, 
I thank all of you and stop my presentation. And I uh, will uh, have uh, uh, small demos uh, by uh, the SRPs uh, Madhu Garu and Baskar Garu uh, about how can we present this in the classroom. So I'll uh, invite uh, Mr. Madhu Babu Garu to start his presentation to show us a, a demo uh, a presentation on how we can present these language functions in the classrooms to our primary children. Thank you all. Madhukar, you are please unmute uh, once. Thank you so much, Suman sir, for introducing me and inviting me for this small demo. Dear teachers, Namaste. And I'm very happy to participate and take part in this webinar conducted by APSCRT. So while well, in this, today's presentation, we will look at how best a language function. And that's all about likes and dislikes, right? Uh, give, please give me some time. Uh, thank you so much and sorry for the disturbance. All right. In this session, we will see we can express uh, likes and dislikes and how well we can introduce likes and dislikes to your friends. And we can ask about likes and dislikes to your friends. And finally, we will know how to conduct a small interview to know about likes and dislikes of your friend. All right. So this is how I plan and well, first you will see how well we can introduce these expressions in our classroom. Uh, I thank Mr. Suman sir for making my job easy. Now say I like, I love, I don't like, I hate. And one more interesting thing is that we will see how well we can design interesting activities and give ample practice to our students. Because as we, we are talking about spoken English, we should give ample practice and provide a lot of opportunities for our students. Let's see how we can do this. And in the third area, we can see how we can help our students use these expressions in their day-to-day -day communication. And finally, we will also see what are the various kinds of uh, techniques we can use to evaluate the learning outcomes. So are you ready? Right. Now, uh, we will begin with a warm-up activity. Uh, look at this picture. What do you find? So, dear teachers, whenever we are beginning a session, we can interact with the students by with a small warm-up activity. And when we close also, we can end with a wrap-up activity. So, first you will see a warm-up activity. So, this is interesting activity. So look at the picture. What do you find? You find a lot of fruits, right? So now what you have to do and what you have to give instructions to your students is Pillalu, me Pillalu, me Randar Kod introduce Cheskoni, me ka natchina fruit ain't to, I like and chappandi, and in natchani daite, I don't like and chappandi. So uh, I'll show you one example. Hello, uh, I'm Madhu. And I like mangoes. And I don't like monkeys. For example, as a class one, class two students, only you can ask about, tell about fruits. Okay? Second, third, fourth, or fifth class, what we will do is, we can ask the students to begin the name of a fruit with their name, as the first letter, M. This is how we can give practice. Now, after this warm-up activity, now we can see how well we can present this activity. First of all, introducing the items. So you can see here, uh, I think you're all hungry now. I'm also hungry, right? Uh, I want to eat this. Uh, what is this? It's a mango. Wow, yummy. Uh, I like it. I love mangoes, right? Uh, what do you find here? This apple, I really love, but I will give it to my son. Now, we'll see. What is this? Tomato. Yeah. I hate it. I don't like tomatoes. 
say now, can you find here? You can use certain gestures and you can bring certain things and you can do this and you can introduce these structures like I like it, I love mangoes. And at the same time, when you don't like, you can say, I don't like it. I hate tomatoes, right? So now we'll play and we will see this. What do you find here? Hmm? What is the girl doing? The girl is eating noodles. So what do you think she will be saying? Yeah, I like noodles. I love noodles. And as Suman sir said, sir gave a lot of expressions. We can use it in our day-to-day -day lives. But whereas for children, they can say, I like noodles or I love noodles. And now we will see, yeah, look at this. She doesn't like it. She hates it. Uh, look at the expression on her face. So you can say, I don't like dates. I hate nuts. So when you are introducing these expressions, you can give support with the pictures or these kind of things. Now, we'll play one more interesting game. So we introduced already, I like and I don't like. Now, I want you to familiarize, I mean, our children, how well we can introduce the concept like questions. And we play a small game. Look at the, a lot of things you can find. What do you find? You can find grapes. You can find strawberry. Uh, what else? You can find chicken biryani. I think it's time now. So, dear, uh, when you are interacting with students, you can say, dear students, can you guess what I like? So now, whether the students are comfortable, it's okay. Otherwise, what we, what we can do is, simply you can ask, do you like grapes? No, I don't like grapes. Uh, do you like strawberry? I don't like strawberry. So you can continue the same thing like that until you get, so that they will get a lot of practice. They will be asking, do you like, do you like, do you love? So now we can see what else I like. So what do you find there? What are the boys doing? They're playing video games, right? So now can you guess what I like? Yes, you're right. I love playing video games, right? Similarly, we can give one more expression. Like what do you find here? A boy is reading a book. So what can we say? Of reading books. Fine. So now we will look at another thing. And as Sir was saying, for first and second, we have a lot of interesting things related to fruit sundae. And then uh, new textbooks low, first and second class low choose the fruits introduced chadam, colors introduced chadam jargandi. Alandapudu, we can ask our uh, students to find out this one. And later on for third and fourth and fifth class coaches, Sergi, uh, we can uh, talk about their habits and hobbies. So now you can say, I love painting. To register this, we can say, you can find a lot of pictures. So a boy is playing piano, guitar. So now you can say, I love listening to music like that. So the next area, once they are familiarized with all these expressions, the best way is we will see about what are the various expressions they use to tell about their likes. And the question like, what do you find there? <laughs> ice cream, right? So do you like ice cream? Then what are the various expressions you can use? Try to give a lot of chances to your children, Andy. I like ice cream. I really like ice cream. Oh, I love eating ice cream. So you can say some children, like as uh, Sarah was saying, informal. I'm crazy about ice cream. I'm fond of ice cream. I do love ice cream. So you learn the expressions, madam. Okay, picture me the chart me the rasi pitte, children really love and it will be very useful. So now uh, we can give more practice like this. Whatever we taught now, you can see now. What do you find? I love eating ice cream, a girl with an ice cream, right? So now we can see one more example. What do you find? An apple, right? So you can say, I'm fond of apples. Now give practice, show some pictures, and maybe you can say you can bring any kind of toys or any kind of items and you can see the flowers and like that you can say and give a lot of practice. And the next area is find there. I think uh, it's uh, chicken lollipops, right? It's time everybody mouth watering dishes are ready. So you can say, I really love chicken lollipops. Do you want? So this is how you can engage the children continuously. So now 
we learnt about likes and now we are talking about dislikes so do you like so everybody likes certain things as uh, we know that and there are certain people they don't like certain things so now the question is do you like pet animals and some people don't like so they say i don't like pet animals i hate pet animals i dislike epudaithe valaku nachudu an anukunnamo what you can say is i dislike i hate i don't like and we can use the other expressions also i'm really sorry but uh, i really don't like pet animals oh now uh, is very dangerous this is how we can give introduce based on the level of the student right so now we will see question and answer practice as we are saying do you like dates no i don't like dates so ila ok picture chupinchadam picture chupinchi a certain expression ichi question adadam then the response will get it and the next important thing up to now we introduced various uh, items now what we will see is you have to write certain expressions on the blackboard or a chart like i like dancing i love eating ice cream and if you don't like something you can say i don't like kabaddi at all and i hate watching uh, tv serials ila manam konni expressions manamu raskoni chart paina raskon pettukunte it will be very useful so that they can use it later on and now after getting all this the next stage is giving practice let's see how we can practice you practice to our student what all you have to do is collect pictures bring pictures to the classroom make it lively and if you don't have a pictures you can bring toys and you can bring a lot of uh, colorful items and all and then you can show and i can the first one you invite three students number one the first one asks about a question like do you like chocolates then ask somebody the other person other student to say yes i like chocolates i really love chocolates and the next one is obviously ask the other student to say no say no uh, do you like grapes no i don't like grapes i hate grapes in this way by looking at that picture this boy or the child can ask a lot of question like what would be the next question what do you find there i think you can find banana right so do you like banana yes i like banana or you can say no i don't like banana so this is how you can give ample practice to our students so hope this will be really useful and now what we'll do is and when we are talking about the further classes and as sir was saying expressing likes is all not enough what they have to do is they love to conduct interviews when they are talking about spoken english remember my dear teachers as uh, tera sir was saying purma ma'am was saying everybody was focusing like it should be spoken english is all about what to say and how to say a pronunciation plays a lot of uh, role here so what we have to do is we have to give small mini dialogues like this so first this is an interview and you can prepare question and answers about likes and dislikes so the first question there should be two students you can give this practice with two partners as a pair drill do you like ice cream yes even in the earlier i mean for class 2 or class 3 children they can simply say yes i like enough do you like mangoes yes i like mangoes and see whenever you are asking a question do you like mangoes yes i like mangoes so a rising tone and falling tone that's what you have to keep note whatever you have learned through this entire webinar seminars and all and please internalize when you are going to the teaching that's very important so what you can give you can give the task related to food items colors and games whatever they like and the last one is don't you like cartoons oh no i'm mad about cartoons so you should be in a position to use the negative questions also as sir was mentioning and you can prepare some more interesting cards like this what's your favorite food item you can give the pictures and then you can find the second one i made it a different like you know what is your favorite color what do you find there you can find a lot of colors right which color do you like and for that colors you can show directly or you can bring lot of uh, balls any items and you can show the children and they can say i love 
love green color or I love red color. I love blue color. So this is how we can say. So one more interesting thing, uh, dear teachers, whenever our students are not opening their mouth, one thing what we can do is we can give an alternative question. Like, do you like grapes or oranges? So definitely they will say grapes, sir, oranges, sir. This is how you can talk about and ask good interviews, conduct interviews. This is the best way of improving your uh, children's spoken English, right? So the next one is we will talk about the evaluation. Process. So let's check our progress and we'll see what are the various tools we can use. So this is what I found in our third class, food habits, good food habits, right? So now we can say, lead the boy towards healthy food. So what do you find there? The boy is saying, I like. You can find apple there and you can like pizza or cream bun. So which one do you think is the right one? I like apple, right? This way of giving small uh, interesting activities with pictures will really help you. And at the same time, you can give one more interesting activity. So here we are familiarizing the children. Please help the children. Please, please help our small children. See, this is one wonderful activity where you can give for their testing. So put the words into the correct order. So like mangoes, I. See, all the expressions we have familiarized already. So ask the students to do it in such a way. Like mangoes. So I like mangoes. So the next one is dislikes. Uh, I, I don't like uh, eggs. And now here is very important. Like, do you like oranges? There's a question form. So then they will identify, do you like oranges? And the last one is, don't you like chicken? So this is how we can give interesting students uh, to all our uh, um, interesting activities for all our students. Now, finally, how well we can conduct a wrap-up session, let us see. Dear teachers, are you ready? Get ready with your mobiles. The game is on. What all you can do is, and the question for you is, do you like APSCRT web series on spoken English? Do you love these activities? Come on, interact in your chat box, all right? So thank you so much uh, for giving this wonderful opportunity. And now there is one more interesting question for you. That's all for my presentation. And we can see a lot of resources later on whenever we have time. And now, and now, so there's a question for you. What's your opinion about online classes? Confused? Don't you have expressions? I think you have a lot of expressions, I'm sure. But to get more clarity, and now I invite our senior and my beloved uh, friend and RP, Mr. Vijay Bhaskar Garu, to come and take the session about expressing opinions. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'll meet in the next thank session. Thank you, Madhu Yeah, I'm ready, smile, sir. Yes. I hope uh, screen is visible to you all. Is it? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Yeah, you can go ahead, sir, with your presentation. Andarki Namaskar. SCRT Varu Niro Histu Nadventi webinar series ko Marakusari Mikuswagatam. Today I am going to present you a demo on expressing opinions. In the Varaku Suman Gardwara Chala Vishal Man Netskuna Ipudu Vitini Mala classroom lo Kavidanga Tiskela lo Vagasar Chuda. Next. And uh, Ismail, sir, please support me in uh, rolling the. Yeah. Objective of my demo is to encourage the children to think and express their objectively, both verbally and non verbally. One more important thing we have to keep in our minds is we are having creative expression as one of our academic standards. Kabati. Cream and eight twenty the academic standards ga woka academic standard ga mano pitkunangabati dan ni mano achieve chayalante 
తప్పకుండా మన పిల్లలను ఈ ఎక్స్ప్రెసింగ్ ఒపీనియన్స్ అనేటువంటి దాంట్లో మాస్టర్స్ గా తయారు చేయాలి అట్లా చేయగలిగినప్పుడు మాత్రమే ఆ అకాడమిక్ స్టాండర్డ్ అనేటువంటిది సంపూర్తిగా నెరవేరుతుంది ఈరోజు ఆ ఎక్స్ప్రెసింగ్ ఒపీనియన్స్ అనేటువంటి దాన్ని పిల్లల్లో ఏ విధంగా పెంపొందించాలా అనేటువంటి దాన్ని మనం చూసే ప్రయత్నం చేద్దాం నెక్స్ట్ బేసింగ్ ఆన్ ద ఆబ్జెక్టివ్ ఆఫ్ ద కాన్సెప్ట్ ఐ హ్యావ్ డిసైన్డ్ మై ప్రజెంటేషన్ ఇన్ త్రీ స్టెప్స్ ఫన్ టు బి టు గివ్ యూ సమ్ టిప్స్ టు రిసాల్వ్ ద డిఫరెంట్ ఇష్యూస్ రిగార్డింగ్ ఎక్స్ప్రెసింగ్ opinions in the classroom and i'm going to present you two demos one for level 1 children that is class 1 and 2 children and secondly i'm going for level 2 children that is class 2 3 uh, class 3 4 and 5 children next coming to the addressing the classroom issues regarding expressing opinions next the major problem we are having in our classroom is with our students because some of the students are timid afraid of their mistakes nen maatladte em tappu povutundo ani maatladalekoye varu some are reluctant to speak asalu maatladakunda unde etuvanti vallu in order to make our children experts in expressing their opinions you have to resolve all these problems ante మనం చేయాల్సినటువంటిది ఏంటంటే ఈ అందరు విద్యార్థులను దృష్టిలో ఉంచుకొని మనం వారికి తగినట్టుగా మన క్లాస్ రూమ్ యాక్టివిటీస్ని డెమోను మనం తయారు చేసుకోగలిగితే డెఫినెట్లీ వీ విల్ గెట్ గుడ్ రిజల్ట్స్ నెక్స్ట్ ఐఎమ్ గివింగ్ యూ సమ్ టిప్స్ టు మేక్ యువర్ చిల్డ్రన్ ఎక్స్పర్ట్స్ ఇన్ ఎక్స్ప్రెసింగ్ దేర్ ఒపీనియన్స్ keep in mind this five important factors in order to make your children experts in expressing their opinions you have to make them listen carefully first listen carefully in the sense listening to your instructions and understanding them second one is thinking over the concept given to them to express their opinion these two are the basic steps are factors you have to develop in your children in order to make them experts in expressing their opinion besides that you also make them experts in speaking the facts in 20 opinion law facts oriented ga vallaku manam training ivali and also we have to allow them to present their versions to present their opinions in a detailed form or in a straight forward sutiga sutti lekunda annatuga so aa vidhanga vallu vaalla expresses nu vaalla opinions nu express chese vidhanga manam cheyali and also we have to encourage the children to provide reasons for their opinions vaallu edo opinion uttiga cheppeyakunda వారు చెప్పేటువంటి ఒపీనియన్ కు ఒక వ్యాలిడ్ రీసన్ ఉండేటట్టుగా మనం తయారు చేయాలి ఇఫ్ యూ కాన్సన్ట్రేట్ ఆన్ దీస్ ఫైవ్ ఫ్యాక్టర్స్ ఆర్ ఇఫ్ యూ డెవలప్ దీస్ ఫ్యాక్టర్స్ ఇన్ యువర్ చిల్డ్రన్ డెఫినెట్లీ దే ఆర్ గోయింగ్ టు బి వెరీ గుడ్ అట్ ఎక్స్ప్రెసింగ్ దేర్ ఒపీనియన్స్ బట్ మై డియర్ టీచర్స్ రిమెంబర్ దిస్ కమ్స్ విత్ ద ప్రాక్టీస్ ఓన్లీ ఏదో ఒకేసారి అన్ని ఇవన్నీ వాళ్ళకు రావు వాళ్ళ వాళ్లకు Kramakramanga, practice, they will get all these uh, factors so that they will become experts. Next. I would like to speak something on this. In order to ask opinions from the children, teachers should have some expressions in their mind. whenever you are going to ask uh, express, uh, your children to express their opinions you must keep these uh, four expressions in your mind what do you think about what do you think about your mother 
what do you think about your father what your what is your opinion about what is your opinion about english subject what is your opinion about math subject what are you what are your feelings about what are your feelings about uh, our school what are your feelings about your family what do you feel about what do you feel about uh, the midday meals served in our school so my dear teachers in order to get good responses from the children it is most important for the teachers to use appropriate expression in the appropriate con context so i request you all to have good practice on these expressions on the other hand encourage your children to express their opinions starting with i think i believe i like in my opinion like that but this also comes with practice give more and more practice to your children to express their opinions freely at one day definitely they will become masters in expressing their opinions next coming to the actual demos meeku inta mundu gaani cheppinattu ga nenu demos ni rendu bhagalaga chestunnanu adu entante okati class 1 to children level 1 children ku ఏ రకంగా మనం క్లాస్ రూమ్ లో వాళ్ళ ఒపీనియన్స్ ను ఎక్స్ప్రెస్ చేయడానికి యాక్టివిటీస్ చేయాలి ముందుగా దీన్ని చూద్దాం ఫర్ దిస్ పర్పస్ ఐ హావ్ సెలెక్టెడ్ ఏ కాంటెక్స్ట్ ఇన్ క్లాస్ టూ ఫ్రమ్ న్యూ ఇంగ్లీష్ టెక్స్ట్ బుక్స్ యూనిట్ వన్ ఏ అండ్ నేమ్ ఆఫ్ ద యూనిట్ ఈస్ వెల్కమ్ టు స్కూల్ అండ్ ఆబ్జెక్టివ్ ఆఫ్ దిస్ లెసన్ ఈస్ టు ఇంట్రడ్యూస్ చిల్డ్రన్ the different things related to school so i have designed a act an activity to allow my children to express their opinions based on this context next sir process is very simple chaala sadhana mano ee aatanu vaadato aadipistha untam ade entante pick the odd one out ane atvanti idi we can make use of this one very effectively to allow or to encourage our children to express their opinions first what you have to do you have to display a chart containing at least four pictures and in these four pictures three pictures should be of one category and one should be odd ask your children to pick the odd one out after that you have to ask them the reason for picking the odd one out and generally they will give you answer in their mother tongue whenever the children are giving their responses are expressing their opinions in their mother tongue please allow it you have to allow their or honor their responses after that it is your part to megaphone it in english and write that expression or their opinion on the blackboard after that you encourage the children to say it in english i would like to give a example for this next let us try this display a picture containing uh, display a chart containing four pictures like this ask your children to round of the odd one generally children will do or they round off the cat in this picture now ask them why they have rounded off or picked out or treated this cat as odd one ask them to the express their opinions they will give so many so many opinions some may say book chapter and pencil are things whereas the cat is living thing or book chapter pencil are related to school where cat is not related to school like this they will give so many examples ok sari gathamlo nen pan chesina school lo i was trying odd man odd one picking out odd one out with the same picture ఇదే పిక్చర్తో నేను ఒకసారి 
ఒక ట్రై చేశారు ఒక సెకండ్ క్లాస్ చిన్నారి అన్ అనుకున్నట్టుగానే పిల్లి చుట్టూ రౌండ్ ఆఫ్ చేసింది క్యాట్ చుట్టూ రౌండ్ ఆఫ్ చేసింది నేను అడిగాను వాట్ ఈస్ ద రీజన్ ఎందుకు నువ్వు దాని చుట్టూ రౌండ్ ఆఫ్ చేసావు అంటే ఆ చిన్నారి అన్నది బుక్ షార్ప్నర్ పెన్సిల్ని నేను స్కూల్కు తీసుకురావచ్చు సార్ కానీ నేను క్యాట్ని తీసుకురాలేను కదా అన్నది ఆ తర్వాత తెలుసుకోబోతే ఆ అమ్మాయికి ఒక పెట్ క్యాట్ ఉందట ఇంట్లో లైక్ దాట్ ఇఫ్ యూ ఎన్కరేజ్ చిల్డ్రన్ టు ఎక్స్ప్రెస్ దేర్ ఒపీనియన్స్ ది విల్ గివ్ మోర్ అండ్ మోర్ ఒపీనియన్స్ దే కెన్ ఫ్రీలీ ఎక్స్ప్రెస్ దేర్ ఒపీనియన్స్ సో బై యూసింగ్ సింపుల్ ఆర్ట్ వన్ అవుట్ యాక్టివిటీ యూ కెన్ మేక్ యువర్ చిల్డ్రన్ టు ఎక్స్ప్రెస్ దేర్ ఒపీనియన్స్ ఇన్ ద క్లాస్ రూమ్ సార్ నెక్స్ట్ yes sir yes sir when you are asking to uh, asking the children to express their opinions in the level 1 for class 1 and 2 children you have to use some questions like this why are you thinking it is different why are you thinking the cat is different express your opinion in order to connect it to their daily life ask like this where do you see this in order to know their interest ask like this do you like it if you like it why you know all these questions you can make the children to express their opinions freely next you can make next sir you can make use of so many items like uh, uh, asking the children to draw the picture asking the children to color the picture next next asking the asking the children to uh, uh, react on a picture like that you can make use of so many things so that they can give chance they can get chance to express their opinions but remember one thing class 1 and 2 if you are teaching class 1 and 2 that is level 1 children let always expressing their opinions in oral form only if they can if they are, if they are able to express their opinions in written form well and good but mostly try to elicit their responses or opinions in oral form quickly coming to third fourth and fifth classes that is uh, uh, the level 2 i have selected a context from class 3 new english textbooks in unit 2 name of that unit is the recipe book the uh, story is simple it is all about the kitchen utensils coming together for preparing different food items for a dinner next sir how to go how to uh, ask your children to express their opinions i am giving you a simple processor first ask the class ask your children to say you the things which are required for cooking and write them on the board when you are writing on the board don't write them in the form of a list you have to write them in the uh, in random fashion one word here one word there like that on the board it will create some interest among the children after that ask them the what they what for they are used for example they have said different kitchen items that are used for cooking food like a knife like pot like a stove like mixi you yeah, you are you have written all these things on the board now ask them what for they are used and ask them to write it on any in their notebooks go around the class and see what they are doing support the children who are lagging back in writing their expression after that ask a question ask them which thing they like most they will ask them to write it again after that discuss with the children about their answers because the children are very curious about knowing the opinions of others so ask their opinions and uh, uh, discuss it for a brief period 
after that write this uh, fill in the blanks exercise on the board i like dash because dash and you as a teacher you have to fill this first it is very important as a teacher to present your version to the children because it will be to do the next step so write like this if i am the teacher i like i i'll uh, write like this i like knife because it helps me in cutting vegetables present your version and ask the children to write their opinion after writing that you have to ask them to share their opinion i like so and so item or thing in the kitchen because it helps for so and so purpose if you encourage this they can express their opinion in the written form when you ask them to share that they express their opinion in verbal form in spoken form next sir next sir oh, previous slide one more slide is there sir right basing on sir yeah, thank uh, basing on the less learning standards of the children you can give more and more creative tasks in order to develop the expression that is expressing opinions you can give them some situations ask them to express their opinions like give them some situations speak something about how we celebrate children's day in our school speak something about how you celebrated diwali at your home and even keeping in mind the learning levels of the children you can give some clues and ask them to express their opinions in the description form you can show them a picture ask them to express their opinion in written form by describing it or ask them to say something describing the picture also you can give a situation to them ask them to write a conversation a conversation a situation like your mother is sick and your father is in the kitchen trying to cook food for you and you are helping your father what is the possible con conversation between you and your father ask them like this ask them to write that uh, possible conversation in order to express their opinion or even you can ask them basing on their learning standards small stories to express their opinions my dear teachers next sir my dear teachers if you do all these activities definitely you make your children experts in expressing their opinions remember one thing we have set this creative expression as one of the academic standards so in order to achieve that academic standard we have to make our children experts in expressing their opinions as for listening to this demo will work you a lot in your classroom i will meet you once again in another interesting session till then bye and take good care of yourself over to ismail sir thank you very much vijay baskar garu and madhu garu uh, thank you suman uh, sir over to you yeah um, so welcome back uh, dear teachers i thank uh, mr vijay baskar and mr madhu babu both of them for putting in wonderful efforts in order to showcase uh, so many ways of uh, so many ideas that we can carry into our uh, classroom transaction i am sure the teachers will find these sessions uh, useful and they'll carry a lot of uh, things and try out in their uh, classrooms so thank you both of you once again for your efforts uh, uh, ismail sir can we now have the question answer yes, session sir. already a lot of time has been over no so we'll take few questions only yes uh, pushparaj getuluru mandal prakash he is asking that how does opinion differs from consent conviction doctor right 
Um, sorry, how does opinion differ from differ consent? From consent, conviction. Conviction. Okay. Doctor. Yes. Yes, sir. So, sir, yeah. Opinion, as I said, is uh, your feeling. It is just the way you feel about something or uh, somebody. Whereas consent, giving consent is also a language function, sir. Consent and a end ledu agreement. Ante mere consent ivadam. Ante uh, you are actually allowing somebody to do something. Ante me consent ivadam. Ante permission ivadam. Mune ardham. Ikka da e context lo agreement. So you are in a express opinion express chase na puru giving consent. Ante giving your opinion ani ardham osthundi. But more consent is more of uh, uh, accepting. or uh, allowing somebody to do something for example uh, you want to do something you want somebody's consent ante vaalla approval kavali meeku okay go ahead ani chepte right for example you want to start a new initiative in your school you want uh, your headmaster's consent consent sorry so consent ante his approval okay sir uh, after listening to your idea if he says oh, okay go ahead he has given you his consent and i an accept chesaru i an approve chestunnaru ani artham vastundi conviction is different conviction is uh, how strong you are it shows your will power right meer edaina chestunnapudu enta conviction tho unnaru enta will power tho unnaru enta positive ga unnaru anedi that shows your conviction yes sir. thank you your master so uh, under question giri babu So please differentiate a word feel and opinion. Word feel and opinion, uh, <laughs> sir. Uh, yeah, uh, they are just two words which we use uh, to express opinion, sir. The feel and the general uh, meaning was told. I mean, feel and the feeling. But again, feeling is nothing but an alternative for opinion. And the proof opinion and any you are thinking about somebody, your thoughts on something and somebody. So opinion grammatically, just call and they have a noun form. So opinion express chase at a puru. In my opinion, and just put me. In my opinion, that is your work form. Undi opined and tam. He opined that. And the other is the opinion. Just paru and just put that. He opined and tam. She opined. And the that is even that the opinion express chase at a puru. And that is opined and just put it. దాన్నే మనం మోర్ కామన్ వర్డ్స్ లో వర్బ్ గా ఫీల్ అని యూజ్ చేస్తాం రైట్ ఇన్ మై ఒపీనియన్ అని చెప్పుకోవడానికి బదులుగా ఐ ఫీల్ అని సింపుల్ గా ఇన్ఫార్మల్ గా చెప్పుకోవచ్చు అనమాట ఐ ఫీల్ ఎస్ సార్ థ్యాంక్ యూ వెరీ మచ్ సార్ గో విత్ లాస్ట్ క్వశ్చన్ అబ్దుల్ రజాక్ షేక్ వైల్ యూజింగ్ లాంగ్వేజ్ ఫంక్షన్ ఈ స్పోకెన్ ఇంగ్లీష్ డస్ గ్రామర్ ప్లే మేజర్ రోల్ Yes, I uh, already saw that question in the comments, live comments. Uh, thank you, Raza Garu, for uh, raising a valid question. Yeah, definitely, sir. Wherever language is involved, it is not about language functions. Yekkad ekkadai the man an language use che esto na mo. Whether it is for communicating or whether it is for teaching purposes, grammar definitely plays a major role. Ka kapote? I statement ni man mo chala. డీటెయిల్డ్ గా అర్థం చేసుకోవాల్సి ఉంటుంది వాట్ డూ యూ మీన్ బై గ్రామర్ ప్లేయింగ్ అండ్ ఇంపార్టెంట్ రోల్ ఎక్కడెక్కడైతే లాంగ్వేజ్ ఉంటుందో బై డిఫాల్ట్ గ్రామర్ అక్కడ ఉంటుందండి కాకపోతే వాట్ డూ యూ మీన్ బై ప్లేయింగ్ ఏ మేజర్ రోల్ అన్నప్పుడు మనం తీసుకున్నప్పుడు మనం గ్రామర్ మీద డైరెక్ట్ ఫోకస్ పెడుతున్నామా లేదంటే ఇండైరెక్ట్ గా ఫోకస్ చేస్తున్నామా అనేది కొంచెం వీ హ్యావ్ టు అబ్జర్వ్ అండి అంటే మనం హయ్యర్ క్లాసెస్ లో టీచ్ చేసేటప్పుడు ఎక్స్ప్లిసిట్ గా అంటే డైరెక్ట్ గా గ్రమాటికల్ ఎలిమెంట్స్ గురించి మాట్లాడొచ్చండి కానీ ప్రైమరీ క్లాస్ రూమ్స్ లో మనము వీ షుడ్ నాట్ ఫోకస్ ఆన్ గ్రమాటికల్ గ్రామర్ అంటేనే బేసికలీ టెక్నికల్ ఇన్ఫర్మేషన్ అండి స్ట్రక్చరల్ ఇన్ఫర్మేషన్ సో ప్రైమరీ క్లాస్ రూమ్స్ లో ఫోకసింగ్ మోర్ ఆన్ గ్రామర్ లేదంటే గ్రామర్ మేజర్ రోల్ ప్లే చేయడం అంటూ డైరెక్ట్ గా ఏమి ఉండదండి బట్ ఇండైరెక్ట్ గా వాట్ ఇట్ మీన్స్ ఈస్ టీచర్ గా మనం మాట్లాడుతున్నప్పుడు వాట్ ఎవర్ వీ డూ వెదర్ వీఆర్ ఎక్స్ప్లెయినింగ్ ఎ లెసన్ నరేటింగ్ అ స్టోరీ జస్ట్ రిసైటింగ్ ఎ రైమ్ రైట్ వీఆర్ గివింగ్ దమ్ ఇన్స్ట్రక్షన్ కండక్టింగ్ యాక్టివిటీస్ ఈ లాంగ్వేజ్ మనము యూజ్ చేసేటప్పుడు యాజ్ టీచర్ వీ హ్యావ్ టు మేక్ షూర్ దాట్ అవర్ లాంగ్వేజ్ ఈస్ కరెక్ట్ గ్రమాటికల్ అప్రోప్రియేట్ 
every time we speak to children if we make sure that our language is simple and correct and comprehensible automatically uh, uh, dantlo unna correctness grammar aspects children will indirectly pick up and so definitely it will play an important role but the what it means is we have to make sure as teachers our language is grammatical danik minchi we don't have to do anything explicitly or thank you very much sir thank you so much uh, so uh, i thank one and all uh, vijay baskar garu madhu garu and uh, leading the uh, suman garu so many compliments i have seen in your uh, in the comment section so for congratulations uh, congratulations for that and uh, we as time is running out uh, we convey our thanks to one and all and we'll say bye for today and we'll meet uh, in another topic uh, in the day 14 uh, with uh, purnima ravi garu making suggestion and giving advice that will be the topic on monday so stay tuned till then so subscribe our channel share our channel you will get notification thank you very much namaste thank you all